Leah Finocchiaro, welcome to State Line. Thank you for having me. Territorians are set to head to the polls in August. Why should they vote for you? Well, the CLP is all about a safe and strong territory for the families, no matter where they live. And what's been really clear to us is the feedback from our community who are hurting with ever escalating levels of crime, high cost of living, and of course, an economy going backwards. So the proposition for Territorians is really clear this August. If you want to change the territory, you've got to vote for change. And we're excited at the opportunity to drive the territory forward. The last time that the country Liberal Party were in power, it was riven with dysfunction. You were a part of that government. Are you confident that the CLP has what it takes to this time avoid a similar fate? Uh, look, there's no question the CLP is focused and united around one single thing, and that is about making the Territory a better place for everyone. It's a responsibility we take very, very seriously, but I know I've got the right team and, and I'm asking Territorians to hang in there and continue to fight because we can turn things around. This will once again be a great place to live, work and invest. Well, one tourism body says that the alcohol restrictions that the Northern Territory faces for all those health impacts and societal impacts that they are having, driving away tourism and hurting mm. the economy in Central Australia. So is there also an appetite from the CLP to ease the restrictions around accessing alcohol? Well, we've always been really clear that Labor's temporary alcohol restrictions in Alice Springs can't be there forever, but we wouldn't lift them until there was other policies and things in place to be able to manage alcohol. And that's part of that is compulsory alcohol treatment. So it's... Just very quickly, how much is that going to cost compulsory alcohol treatment? Here in the Northern Territory. Well, that's something we're out to consultation on. We're really open-minded about what that model or perhaps models could look like because what this government has done is just target supply. They haven't addressed the fact that there is chronic demand for alcohol in proportions that other jurisdictions just, just don't see. So we have to be making people healthy. We have to be getting people well. CLP are proposing on the issue of youth crime to reducing the age of criminal responsibility back to 10 from 12 years of age. Yes. What experts have said that this is a good idea and what have they said? Well, the experts that the CLP listen to are the everyday Territorians who are out there sick and tired of being victims of crime. We had hollow promises from Chansey Paik and the Labor government that they would not raise the age until the right programs were in place. And instead, they went ahead and did it, driven by ideology, not what's right for our community. And the CLP won't stand for it, and we're not ashamed about that. We're very strong and comfortable with our decision to lower the age. If we're capturing young people early, while that offending is in its infancy, we can turn their life around through boot camps and bush camps and other alternative sentencing options that are going to make sure they show they're shown a better way forward given an education and hopefully develop skills and training going forward so they have a productive life rather than a life of crime. The CLP have said that they want to bring back spit hoods to youth detention centres and to watch houses. Mm. Where do they fit into your youth justice scheme? So what we know is there are highly volatile offenders, and unfortunately many of them are youth offenders, who feel like it's okay to bite their cheek, bite their tongue, and spit blood and phlegm in the face of corrections and police. And that then presents a risk to that frontline worker around transmitting a communicable disease, which means they can't go home and kiss their loved ones, hug their children. How, how many reports though have you had of that happening? Uh, we hear instances of spitting and biting police constantly and so the message is very clear. If you don't want to wear a spit hood, don't spit in the face of our police. Labor is rallying around the economic and social benefits of expanding the gas industry in the Northern Territory. What's the CLP's way of differentiating itself from Labor at this election when Labor is very much pro-resources as well? Well, I don't think Labor are pro-resources. They just try to make it look like they've got a foot in both camps. Of course, this is a Labor government that put in a moratorium on onshore gas, hasn't been able to get this industry up and running, despite the fact that we have gas shortages for Territorians. So I think they're trying to play both sides of the fence, whereas the CLP has always been crystal clear that a well-regulated onshore gas industry is critically important. Does the CLP then still intend to uphold its commitments or the government's commitments, the current government's commitments 
to halve emissions by 2030 and then net zero by 2050. Yeah, the CLP is committed to those renewable energy and emissions targets and we always have been. But onshore gas has a critical role to play in, in a much bigger space than just the territory. We are a very small jurisdiction with just 250,000 people. But think of the tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of people that we can be providing a cleaner source of energy for and getting them off coal. I mean, it really is a transformational source. Labor says if you do win the next election, your plans will be to privatise assets such as power and water and territory generation. Is that your plan? Uh, absolutely not. And again, this is Labor trying to deflect from decades of its own failures. We've been very clear that public assets will remain in public hands if we're elected in August this year. On Indigenous Affairs, the CLP opposed The Voice. It is now, as a statement that came out on the weekend, opposing treaty. What is the CLP's policy in this space then? Decentralising control of local government and putting that back in the hands of Aboriginal people out in communities. And we're very excited about putting more detail into that policy. We're currently out to consultation and the feedback we've received is overwhelmingly supportive. And we're not afraid to try something new and listen to people on the ground about how we can better develop local government going forward. But I don't think any member of local government could look me straight in the eyes and tell me that what's happening right now is working. Is the CLP just walking away from from aspects of reconciliation entirely? Well, The Voice was resoundingly voted against by the entire Australian community. We don't see treaty as an immediate pathway to deliver better outcomes for Aboriginal people living in the bush. And I can tell you, when you're out in community, the number one issue people are raising is around the total disempowerment that they're feeling. We're very focused on that as a practical way forward that we can empower people living in the bush and deliver a much better level of government and services to people. If you are elected in August, what kind of Chief Minister do you want Territorians to see you as? I'd like to think if we're elected in August that people see me as approachable and a fighter, someone that they can trust in to take the fight up when things aren't going well. And I just know that the Territory's best days are ahead of us and the Territory today doesn't have to be the Territory of tomorrow. So I hope they see in me someone as an ally, someone who will take up the fight and make sure we drive the Territory forward. Leah Finocchiaro, thank you very much. Thank you.